Welcome back to Let's Play Disco Elysium. Last episode, we explored uh, the corners of the map. Not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. You think I can have some of that salami? Sure thing. It is salty. It is savory. It is chewy. The hangover only makes the salami more tasty. Appreciate it, man. Want some too, officer? Why not? Hmm. Okay, well, there's a source of health right there. Talk to the townsfolk, and um, now it's a little late. 1900? What is that? 7 p.m.? Um, we've got options. So, let's check our journal. We've got a couple side quests. Um, oh, what's this? We have some affiliations. Superstar Cop 0, Apocalypse Cop 1, Sorry Cop 4, Boring Cop 1, 3, Ultra Liberal, Communist, Fascist, Moralist, 1 Honor, 3 People Killed. Okay. Yeah, um, so what, what are the things that we need to do? We still need to talk to the people striking. And, um, we need to figure out where we're going to sleep. Uh, yeah. So I guess our situation is a little weird at the moment. Let me see if Kim has anything to say. Yes. Hmm. Check our character. So endurance. Is that two? I forgot which stat was for morale. Let me see this. Give me a second, I'm just gonna check real quick. Okay, yeah, it's a uh, volition. Check our items. Hmm. Well, if it's nighttime. I think instead of, uh, instead of going that way, I'm gonna try my luck with the bridge, the rickety bridge. Okay, nothing bad happened to us. A lonely cormorant surveys the sea, indifferent to your approach. What's up here? This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Oh, why am I looking at this? Plus two, in dimming light, some things become clearer. Eight percent? Yeah. You have no clue. So many walls all up. Money. And magnesium. Are you trying to sneak up on me? Come to slit my throat in my sleep? Apparently, she doesn't like people standing behind her back. Logic error. She is not sleeping right now. Pigs come to take me out. Trying to snuff me out. Oh, sorry for sneaking Faggity. up on you. Look at the ass on that. Let's see. What's this? 
A garden hose. This won't be of use until the snow melts. Chairs and tables, eaten by rain and rot. Another splatter splattering of bo bullet holes on this wall. Oh, orange bum hat. Plus one reaction speed, minus one rhetoric. And, another fed. Let's check the door over here. Actually, I think I'll equip the bum hat. I haven't the need for, uh... Eh... Eh... An orange beanie with a couple of big-ass holes on the side. It looks like it might have been used as a mask during an armed robbery. Hmm... Hmm... I'll take it. My encyclopedia is pretty good. There must be another way into the building. A balcony with a view to the yard and the hanging. Okay, there's a man up there. Into this little door. Just a closed door, but you look at it suspiciously. Is there an entrance this way? Nope, guess not. There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? Inside, the frame of a motorcycle in repair and the tools used to disassemble it. Hey, up here, Pico. Hello, Capeside Apartments. Rue de saint Ghislaine. Roundabout North. A sturdy metal door guards the southwest entrance to the apartment building. It's locked. I knock. The door rattles against your knuckles, but there's no response. I knock again. The door rattles again, but this time you hear an elderly woman's voice calling out from inside. Stop banging on the door. I'm not letting any more strangers inside. Hold on. Who am I speaking to? Doesn't matter who I am. Now go on, get out of here. From within comes the faint sound of a broom sweeping across the concrete floor. This is the police. Please open the door. Ha! The police? Everyone knows the police don't come round here. But, uh, I'm not joking. No. I already told you. I won't be responsible for any more strangers getting into the building. Go check the backyard door. Maybe someone there will. Backyard door? There must be another entrance to the east. Let's check this. Little chute. Locked. Time to equip bar. Pry bar. Hmm. Signal blue, naval coat. Plus what one suggestion. Minus one half light. And what's half light? Half-light? Let the body take control. Threaten people. Ooh, no, I don't want to do that. I think I will equip the signal blue naval coat. Oi, Captain. This classic double-breasted uh, coat suits everyone, including you. And if you ever find yourself battling winds at the helm of a ship, yeah, then the coat's exactly. heavy fabric has got your back, even if a few mods have left a few holes inside. Ooh, that looks real good. Nah.
The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. Hmm. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. Hmm. Hep C. Yeah. When were you last tested? Had a battery of tests just last week. I'm practically a patchwork of interesting critters. Kind of like a man o' war. Hmm. You keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? She turns her head to face the coast and nods disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat docked next to the pier. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That was on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershot. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Hmm. Ozon. An archipelago. The Wild Pines rep? Yes, we should go talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Do you know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Okay, Cindy. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Hmm. What are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aerial graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Hmm. So you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff. Like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so... I have an opinion on this. Wanna hear it? Yeah? Hmm. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. Get you later, Cindy. Watch your back, Ungular. You've got eyes on you. What's this? Hmm. Do I want suggestion or esprit de corps? I'll take the coat. Yes, I will. And maybe I'll uh, unequip the pry bar looks like there was more construction here once decades ago ooh magnesium the belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted Docking, reserved for residents of Rue de Saint-Gislaine, 33A. Your room in the whirling isn't much bigger than this sloop. 
This is worth more than you'll ever earn in all your life. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Joyce Messier. Good evening, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent Messier. the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. She steps closer and holds out her hand over the railing. Joyce L. What exactly is the RCM? Shake her hand. What gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Relax. She meant it in jest. Shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. Like steel. There is strength there. If she wanted, she could sink her nails deep into your skin. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. Gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. Okay, let's get wacky. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief even. This is a tactic. It happens quicker than a shooting star. But did the lieutenant just wink at you? How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. Hmm. You seem rich. Can I have some money? Is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy, <laughs> is it? Wait, why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. What nice fabrics. Why, yes. Tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat, almost rustic in its simplicity. A silk shirt and matching scarf around her gentle throat. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible. Within reason. Yeah, so? Now look at you. You misery-clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. <coughs> your armpits are lakes. A scythe of boons precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too. <laughs> oh. I'm a goddamn working man. I'm not ashamed to shake this leech for some dough. You think you're little. Communism protects you from this feeling. No. The more demeaning it is to grovel at her feet. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. <laughs> White check, volition. You're on a boat? Why, yes I am. Does she have... A name. The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19 because that's the type of sloop it is. Okay. But what kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. And how do you like it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. Oh. I'm That's... enjoying this part of the interview. Mm. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. <laughs> not, a lo not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Wait. 
We're on an archipelago? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Technically, the neighboring Ozone and Fas Alamea island groups are archipelagos, while La Caillou, by contrast, is a single fertile landmass, the fourth largest island in the world. It is not an archipelago. Wait. I thought La Caillou was one big island. Okay, if you want to get technical. The point is, we're all on islands here, and sail is still the most expedient way to get from one island to another. Especially when you're in a hurry to resolve a strike. Still, I haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Kupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Ravachol, between the city and the islands. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Um... Why? Why what? Stop thinking. Take her down. <laughs> It'll come off like I'm, I'm envious, and I'm not. <laughs> You're not? Okay then, just keep on admiring the boat then, unburdened by envy. Hmm, <laughs> I think I have a handle on the boat thing. Good. What can you tell me about this strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. What if I want to hear about trade secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. An octopus? Oh, I will slay it. Good luck. It's only kept in place by the vested interests of half the civilized world, including your own. What the man means is that the Emergencies Act and the RCM both get their authority from the coalition government. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. I leave it alone. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. Yes, what is your role in this precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the Union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Wait. She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Hmm. Tell us more about this behemoth. What can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. So, the strike is connected to lynching? Yes, I believe there is a connection. But that's a subject for later. And how were the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont, despite concessions he'd granted the Union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the Union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the Union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more... I guess you could say... aggressive. Ludicrous, Eva. It's meant. What happened to this... Go on. Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. 
Gomont is short of stature, you see. Oh, not cool. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. Hmm. Well, there, there, uh, tell me about this Union boss, Mr. Clare. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Oh, how expressive. If you were to prick him with something sharp, you could see it oozing out. A knife, maybe? No, a rapier. You sound like you're about to take a rapier to him. Oh, heavens no. We get along just fine. Yet, now that you mention it, I can't stop imagining that black treacle just dribbling down his double chin. Oh, is he that bad? He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. Huh. That complicates things. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. And what about the Union itself? Outside the Brothers Clare? The Debardeurs Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. Hmm. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs union is... Oh. This is where I choose one of my affiliations. Hmm. An effective advocate for the rights of local working men. <laughs> uh, a giant leech sucking the life out of Revachol. Indeed. And a hungry one. Sadly, while Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two <coughs> decades, however much you feed the leech, the leech always hungers. And what are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh yes. Every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. Hmm. I don't know what to think about that. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines group. Hmm. What are you going to do? The workers can't be kings. The king is king. That may well be. It's not up to me to decide who is king, but as negotiations go, it's not a swell start. And what are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. 
Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. The scabs at the gate. Did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? Don't let her answer it herself. Oh, the, the. Uh, no, I, I mean scabs. If these workers were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not yet, at least. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Uh, one more thing. You said something happened in the elections. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. This forewoman, her name? This forewoman, her name. Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just forewoman in private correspondence, Holly. I don't even know if it's a sir or given name, and I don't have access to the union's files. Hmm. Eerie. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play, but what could they do? It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Well, that's all I need here. Let's change the topic. Of course. How else can I help? Now tell me about the Wild Pines. What we do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. So, what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines group is one of the original Revisholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. And who are the other Indo tribes? Son Baptiste, L U M, an unknown entity known as Brightest Star. You're in. Good company, it seems. Why, thank you. And how much money does Wild Pines have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. <laughs> That's it. I thought Wild Pines was supposed to be big time. And to think, there are years when the group books losses in the billions. Wild Pines employ 72,000 people, all of whom have families that depend on their salaries. It is a tremendous responsibility. Where does Wild Pines get all these billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Isolas 250 years ago, when Pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the Suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. What does such a huge system want with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners, who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? 
Whew, 8% of all cargo in the world. That's quite the endeavor indeed. There are no minor cogs in the system. Each terminal must be accounted for, lest the entire system break. Every hiccup in such a system means thousands lose their jobs, the world over. I'm here to assure that doesn't happen. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. Oh, <laughs> and uh, what can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Hmm. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Remember when my partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical e accident? Episode. My lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I could, I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world. Nothing. Oh dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Ooh. 42% red check. She's a negotiator. Just float a favor at her. Insinuate. Surely, there are some other ways to demonstrate our law enforcement credentials. I will be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something very tangible. You're in, but expect her to drive a hard bargain. Like what? Reports from inside Terminal B suggest it's a hub for the local drug trade. This is an open secret in Martinez. The Union controls the terminal. So it goes to reason. They're profiting from this trade. The company has tried looking into this matter before, to no avail. Perhaps someone with your authority and resources might turn over the right stones. Or you can recover your badge. Though if I may be blunt with you, it sounds like that may be a lost cause. Detective, a word in private before we continue. Uh, excuse us for a moment, madame. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. I guess I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a horse. A workhorse. For hard work. What hard work do I do, exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and lelonium after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. That's just what it's like. Life and death. But you got gills on your side, baby got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. Oh yeah, pep talk. Let's do it. I guess I've made some gill, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack 
or shoot yourself in the mouth. <laughs> but you still hustle Fuck. 24 7, ride or die. Oh. Now, ask yourself Are you rich? Yes, quite. Get out of here. You're a pauper. You work harder than anyone. Almost rode yourself to the grave, and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? It's because of that guard guy riding my ass. The guard man has set himself up one of those self-replicating money structures. You should learn from it. Don't play the victim. Think hustler. Think with your head. <sighs> Fucking taxes, man. That's right. 100%. Fucking G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket. Stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, farm. Our tax is almost non-existent in the Gossam Estate. That is River Show. Really? Every time I sneeze? Every time you wipe your ass. 98% of all your money. Oh, 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 oh. This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market type. What are you, a racist? Don't be a racist. Be a cool immigrant, ultra-liberal free market advocate. Ride or die. Keep it street. What? What is this? <laughs> the game is trying to force an opinion out of me. Force a stance. <sighs> oh. You know what? Well, if not being an ultra liberal makes me a racist, then I should guess I should be. Go away, Kim. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. Now, how did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. Oh, we're henchmen now. This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along. Or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. Maybe this is all her plan. She might have heard about you. What do you propose? Uh, 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 well, we could, you know, just find my badge. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large, and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. The situation might have changed drastically by the time you locate it. Time is of the essence. You could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. What do you propose, that we don't investigate the drug trafficking? No. If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. The company must have more years on the ground. She could have known about my condition. I wouldn't go that far. Her reaction did come off as sincere to me. I think she's just quick to adapt. She's a professional, after all. <sighs> Let's get back to her then. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Uh, do you know something about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Hmm. Why? How is you looking at the photos tied to the lynching? Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. Okay, tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Ingredients for what, man? Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quicker to say what you can't make from the stuff. 
Let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara to Revachol through the terminal. Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. Wild Pine seems to be well appraised of the local drug trade, man. Do you mean to say the Union also produces the product? Sells drugs, I mean? We're in logistics. It's our business to know. And no. As far as the company knows, the Union does not produce it. They transport the ingredients for a cut. And you want us to investigate? Yes, but you won't get anything out of Evrat and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. Am I going to need boat cutters for this? Unlikely, officer. I'm talking about the lorries. Once the ingredients reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers, well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they may be vulnerable. How convenient that they're stranded like beached wells at that roundabout. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. Her irises are light green, like the river Esperance in bright daylight, upstream where it's clearer. I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Uncovering Union secrets could also give you an upper hand when dealing with them. Hmm. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. What proof do you have that the Union is involved? How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. There was a shakedown of local businesses preceding the strike. Many were squeezed to bankruptcy to fund it. With all due respect to these desert cacti, the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. The local businesses can scarcely provide for themselves. So, you think the strike is being funded with source ingredients for drugs? Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night, most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. It's no coincidence the lorries are stranded there like that, is it? No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However, this is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the Trade Committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. Thousands of litres of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable. The weary. Well, at least this solves one mystery. What is that, Lieutenant? Why I had to call East Motor Track and beg them to open a drawbridge for me. I'd wonder since I first drove in, on my motor carriage. I am sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Kisaragi, but we need them trapped here. This is a unique opportunity. I'm sure you understand. Hmm. Well, I've made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Yes? We will take this case. Probe the drivers, see what it yields. Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I can keep the drawbridge up for a few more days at least. You should have the time you need. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. Say it, 30% hurt a billions. Can I have some money? I am sorry. It just doesn't come out of your mouth. What does is surprisingly eloquent, really. The last one, not the first three. Those are ape speak. <laughs> money. <laughs> money. Mongi. Excuse me? I didn't hear you. Did you say money? 
Uh, no, I didn't. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Shit. Put skill points into volition to open this white check. Thank you. That's all for of now. Of course, detect. And here we go. Uh, here we go. And check the journal. The jam mystery. Interrogate the drivers about the smuggling. Joyce's info. Joyce. Uh, uh, it's a thought cabinet. The 15th Indo tribe. Why can't I internalize some of these? Oh well. You're back. Good. Yeah. Okay. What can I help you with? Uh, forty-two percent. Can I have some money? I am sorry. It just doesn't come out of your mouth. Surprisingly eloquent, really. The last one, not the first three. Those are ape speak. I am the scum of the earth. My. Why'd you say that? I'm gunk. That's garbage. You're a police officer. Hmm. I'm the stuff people have under their fingernails. Let's talk about something else, please. Of course. Well, that was bad. We had a chance. Time to save. Maybe with a little more volition. A Maybe there's a way to um, increase my... My, uh... Skill points quicker. Or maybe not. Well, we're just gonna check this out. Uh, that smoker up there could be a witness. Talk to him. Yeah. Last task before we retire for the night. You see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. Hmm. Hmm. No trouble from me. I just want to know what's going on here. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Looks like you've got a good view of the Whirling's backyard. Can you tell me about anything about the... Uh, no, go with the name first. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That's definitely not his real name. You're not actually called Martin Martinez, are you? No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? Looks like you've got a good view of the Whirling's backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinez's standards. What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait. Is someone else investigating the lynching? Uh, did I? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. He's an actor declaiming a soliloquy. See how you hang on his every word. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the dull and darkening sky, the neighboring windows stand silent. All right, we'll talk later. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Convince him to stay. Time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and begging. 
Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog. <laughs> please, don't go. I'll stop drinking. I'll, I'll take the trash out. Just please, don't leave me. Trash? Listen, I really have to go. Good luck with the investigation. Oh boy. God, these rolls have been killing me. He's gone. We should run after him, see where he went. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So, we just give up. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. There has to be a way of getting inside the building. Let's go check out the door near the pier again. Once we found the way in, we can ask around for his apartment. Great, let's do that. Okay, journal. Smoke around the balcony. Oh, what's this? A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. Turn it over. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has hundreds of apartments. How are we gonna find the right one? We'll just have to go in and see. Put the stone back. Can I open the door? Yes, I can. Okay, and that's that. We'll see you in the next episode.